Symmetries play an important role in physics through Noether's theorem, but not only. We saw, for instance, that the Lagrangian has to be built as a Lorentz scalar in order to have Lorentz invariance of the underlying physics. We will now focus on gauge invariance, and in particular on local gauge invariance, and we will see how much uh, it constrains the possibilities for the Lagrangians. But first, let's revisit the case of global gauge invariance uh, for a free fermion obeying uh, the Dirac Lagrangian. The Dirac Lagrangian uh, depends both on Psi and Psi bar, therefore we need to specify how the global gauge transformation acts on uh, Psi bar as well. We can now look at how the Dirac Lagrangian transforms. Alpha being a constant, the covariant derivative has no effect on the exponential term, and therefore we can move it to the left and cancel it with exponential minus i alpha. As a result, a global gauge invariance is a symmetry of the Dirac Lagrangian. In the language of group theory, it's called a U1 symmetry. That's because um, the transformation is unitary, therefore we have a U for unitary. And it's also uh, represented by uh, one by one matrices because the exponential i alpha is, ju is just a number. And that's why we have one because it's a one by one matrix. So that's a very simple uh, transformation and therefore a very simple symmetry, uh, which is usually uh, obvious and here for any system. However, this is true for the case of global gauge uh, transformation where alpha is a constant. We are now looking at the case of local gauge uh, transformation where alpha is a function of space-time. 